a lot to talk about y'all today, but before we uh, do start this video, uh, I just want to say sorry to Patriots Nation. You know, I whipped on y'all real bad. Uh, we'll put way back some uh, clip of me, you know, um, whipping on y'all pretty badly. This was probably about two months ago after you got blown by the Titans where I said, you know, I don't believe in y'all quite frankly, but y'all proved me wrong. Right off the bat, the New England Patriots are pretenders. Okay, I'm going to listen. I expect the Patriots to make it to the second round of the playoffs, but that's about it. They got a nine head, but just the eye test tells me Tom Brady's on the decline a little bit. And their leading receiver is James White, Okay. I said, I don't think they're better than the Chiefs. They're not be better than the Steelers. They're not better than the Chargers, in my opinion. Or they're, they're not better than the Texans. I'm talking. What's good y'all? It's your boy Jamon McKinney bringing y'all the same energy again. I'm back here with another video for y'all. You know, I'm, I I'm gonna do a couple more reaction videos, you know, as the season goes on next season for basketball, things like that too. You know, I figure I gotta give y'all reactions to, you know, what transpires. I haven't been doing that a whole lot, so I'm gonna do that more. But, um, you know, I'm back here with another video for y'all. G-H-I-M-A-N is how you spell my name. Follow me on social media, all that good stuff. But let's get right into it, guys. You know, two great games. You know, it's always great when you get great football being played. I like the college football playoffs, you know, those are all blowouts. But, you know, two overtime games, the Chiefs um, lose to the Patriots, and the Saints um, lose to the Rams. Both home teams, sent packing. Road teams prevail. Patriots fans, once again, I'm sorry. You know, I already apologize to you guys. I was wrong about you. I just flat was, you know, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady. As long as they're together, they're going to probably run the AFC. But we're going to start with the Saints and Rams, you know. I told y'all the Rams were going to win. I, I told y'all that was going to happen, you know. Um, people thought I was crazy. Apparently, I don't know football, but it's okay, you know. Um, you know, the Rams, they had more total yards than the Saints. That was a good first step, you know. The, I told y'all, I think if the Rams are going to beat the Saints, they need to force them to be one-dimensional. Guess what they did? The Saints only had 48 rushing yards. You know, that's way below their average. The Rams did a great job uh, limiting um, Alvin Kamara and uh, Mark Ingram, you know. I also said I think Drew Brees... These last five, six games has not been the same quarterback, and he hasn't. Looking at the games, watching them, seeing the stats, I said Drew Brees has not looked like the MVP quarterback these last six games. He's just missed some throws. He's not growing through his progressions enough. He's holding on the ball too much, you know. People are starting to figure out the Saints offense, you know. I, I just said that. They don't have any deep threats, you know. Outside of that 48-yard pass toward the end of the game, you know, to take in, which Drew Brees underthrew, um, they didn't really have a whole lot of deep threats. It's a dink and dunk offense. You know, it's a great dink and dunk offense. Sean Payton does a great job of scheming these guys open. But if you're, if you're the Saints in the offseason, you need a deep threat. Um, you know, Marcus Peters, all that chirp, 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 talking, talking, type, 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 that he did, he backed it up, y'all. He backed it up. You know, Michael Thomas, where were you at? 36 yards. The leading receiver for the Saints was Alvin Kamara. Now, he had 96 catch yards. But he, only, he had like it on, had it on like 11 catches, so that's nine yards per catch. You know, the, the Rams will take that any day of the week. You know, the Rams were able to get a little bit of pressure on Tom Brady. You know, the Rams started off pretty bad. You know, the Saints, um, people want to say, oh, man, oh, the Saints, man, they got robbed, man. They, they were robbed, man. And the fast defense, uh, section uh, 17, rule for whatever you want. Michael Thomas tweeting all this stuff. Oh, yeah, man, uh, this is robbery, man. Pass interference should be reviewed no no guys come on man this was good rams now look i'm gonna say this right now that was a pass interference call i totally agree i would be mad if i'm a saints fan too but i'm not just gonna sit here and say oh man we got robbed man <laughs> get robbed, get robbed, no you didn't get robbed you didn't get robbed look there were several calls on the rams that were not called you know in the end zone that would have put the ball at the one yard line first and goal. The Rams, there was a face mask. There was a face mask on Jared Goff that was not called. There were several calls that the officiating crew said they missed with the Rams. That was not called. So it went both ways. You're just looking at the most recent one, you know. 
So it's whatever, you know. It was pass interference, like I said, clearly was. It was helmet to helmet contact. The dude, you know, touched the guy before the ball even got there, and he didn't even have his head turned around the ball. I agree, it was pass interference, but for one, you were up after you got the field goal. You let the Rams go down, and score a field goal, but you get the ball first in overtime, and you don't score. You throw up, you turn the ball over your first position on overtime. When you get the ball like that in overtime with the coin toss. That's it right there. Win the game. It was right there for y'all. Yeah, I understand the frustration that you say, oh, wouldn't have got to that point, man. Oh, wouldn't have got to that point, man. Wouldn't have got it doesn't matter. Great teams overcome things and make breaks for themselves. I'm sorry the Saints did not get robbed. I'm sorry. And then Sean Payton, what are you doing? You kind of lost this game too. Um, the drive in which the pass interference was called that probably you guys say, oh, the start of the game, man. Uh, yeah, the drive where um the game was quote unquote decided. Sean Payton passes the ball on first down. What are you doing? Why are you passing the ball on first down? You need to run the ball on first down for one because the Rams only have two timeouts. You know, you can run out the clock a whole lot. I guarantee you, if you run the ball twice on first down, I understand the run game was not working, but you have to at least try it. You know, the clock is your friend. Not trying to run out the score. Um, you know, the clock's your friend, like I said. If you run the ball first down, I guarantee your chances of winning increases. Because you basically, by it being complete, Drew Brees made a terrible throw. By that pass being complete, uh, uh, by that pass being incomplete, I meant, um, you know, you give the Rams extra time out because it stopped the clock. And then you pass the ball on third down, too, which also stopped the, the clock for the Rams. You know, it gave them an opportunity to go down the field, have enough time to score. And then, you know... That, that was just bad football. It was bad execution. Oh, oh but yeah, man. When it got to that point, man. When it got to that point, the fish made the call, man. They missed it. Yeah, they missed it. But guess what? Would it have gotten to that call if you guys would have executed on your first two drives and got touchdowns instead of field goals? You set up for two field goals in the red zone. Um, You know, you had prime opportunities early in the game to put it away, basically. You put the game away with two touchdowns right there, it's over. Dude drops the ball in the end zone for the Saints. Uh, You go three and out right after you get a turnover. That's just bad football. Also for Drew Brees, I think it's the end of the road for Drew Brees. I really do. You know, these last eight so or so games, Drew Brees did not look like an MVP-type quarterback. Um, it's hard to repeat. It's hard to come back from a loss like that, you know. He just he just doesn't look like the same quarterback. And then, until they get some deep weapons on offense, I don't see the Saints going anywhere. And, you know, that defense will be, are, is starting to get older. You know, Cameron Jordan, he's going to get older. A lot of players in that defense are going to get older. Um, you know, their division. I think the Falcons will be back next year. I just think this is Drew Brees' last opportunity to win a Super Bowl. And, you know, it was right there. And I kind of feel bad for him, but... This might be the end all road. He's not getting any younger at all. You know, it's that that just might be it for Drew Reeves and the Saints, unfortunately. They'll probably make the playoffs next year, but Super Bowl contender, you still got the Philadelphia Eagles, you still got the Rams, the Cowboys who beat you guys this year. You know, a lot of good teams, and Saints just don't fall in that category next year, but now that we've addressed all the reasons why the Saints blew the game, let's talk about the reasons why the Rams won. And let's you know Jared Goff played a great game. He won this game, baby. Nothing Jared Goff, he played a great game. Sean McVay, that call on um, the fake punt uh, to throw the pass was great. It, it was a great energizer for the entire team because it got him back in the game, man. And congrats to Todd Gurley, man. His post game, you know, he was all congratulating C.J. Anderson. You know, that that's all about being a team player. Todd Gurley was benched. Congrats to Sean McVay for realizing that Todd Gurley was not our best option. He's a star player. Put his ego aside. Put C.J. Anderson in there. Keep the change with C.J. C.J. Anderson didn't have a great game, but he was doing better than Todd Gurley was. And Jared Goff, man, that throw that Brandon Cooks he threw uh, to put them in position to get their first touchdown, that was a perfect pass. Jared Goff, the stats don't show that he had a great, great game, but if you watch the game, watch the game, guys. Jared Goff was making literally perfect throws that cannot be defended. When you, the one thing you can't defend in the NFL is really a perfect ball. The only way you can defend that is the receiver uh, drops the ball, and the Rams have good receivers. So, Jared Goff, congrats to you. He outplayed Drew Brees, especially down the stretch, man. Jared Goff, third down after third down. Tough throw after tough throw into those tight windows, man. He was clutch. And the Rams ultimately were the better team. I told y'all that was going to happen. They're heading on a Super Bowl. I give them a very good chance to win it. Now let's get to the Chiefs and um, Patriots. A little bit different game, you know. Uh, the Chiefs, you can't get shot out in the first half. You just can't. Patrick Mahomes had a key um, play where, you know, it was. I think they were down seven nothing. Um, Tom Brady did throw a red zone interception. That which is great, which is crazy. Whoa, Tom Brady throwing red zone interceptions. Um, that's bad. But um, you know, um, the Chiefs were, I believe, around their thirty yard line. They were down seven nothing. And Patrick Mahomes takes a sack on third down that took him out of field goal range. That was key because if that didn't happen, 
probably not going to overtime at the end of the game. Um, but, you know, the, the Patriots, man, they held the ball for 42 minutes, I believe, on the clock. The Chiefs had the ball for 20. That's the perfect key to beating the Chiefs. They shut them out in the first half. Now, what's alarming is the fact that the Chiefs, um, you know, had the ball for literally only probably seven minutes in the first half, 20 minutes the whole game. The Patriots had it 42 minutes and went to overtime. Like, whoa, what, what are you talking about? Whoa, whoa. Um, you know, ultimately the Patriots, they have made less mistakes than the Chiefs, you know, and they had a better um, defense, you know, that situationally held Tyreek Hill to one catch. Held uh, Travis Kelsey to about 30 yards, you know. All the Patriots key players, you know. Julian Edelman, he had over 100 yards, you know. Gronkowski was involved. The Chiefs were unable to take away the weapons of the Patriots. The Patriots uh, took away the weapons of the Chiefs. It was that simple. Um, and they they held the, they controlled the line of scrimmage uh, by a mile. And the Chiefs' defense is terrible. Um, and I don't want to hear about the overtime rules, too. You know, the Chiefs don't have the 30th worst defense. Get off the field. And I don't want to hear overtime rules need to be changed. I'm sorry. I'm a Packers fan. I witnessed two years in a row after Brandon Bostic blew the game. Aaron Rodgers didn't get the ball. Um, in overtime, we lose. Next year, uh, throws a Hail Mary, doesn't get the ball in overtime, and loses. And I ain't complaining. You shouldn't either. Score! You got Tom Brady. I give you credit. You made some great throws. I said Tom Brady. I don't think he can make, he can make those tight window throws. He was making those tight window throws. Patrick Mahomes did miss a touchdown pass. Um, you know, early in the game, um, he, the dude was wide open on a wheel route. He missed it. Um, you know that those are key things that you just have to hit when you're playing the Patriots. And D four, man, that's what cost. That's what ultimately cost him the game, man. You know, the Patriots had some bad penalties too, but man. That was the game. Tom Brady would throw, have thrown his third interception. You know, it gets called back. So, ultimately, the more disciplined team, the more prepared team, won. And, um, you know, you don't have to be the better team, but you have to execute. And the Chiefs just didn't flat out execute. I think Patrick Mahomes will learn from this. But this is bad for Andy Reid. This is bad on his legacy. You know, he has yet to win a big uh, playoff game. You know, he's gotten to one Super Bowl. Hasn't done it. He's been coaching forever. Andy Reid needs to get a Super Bowl win. If he does not, if he... D disappoints in the playoffs next year, man. He might be on the hot seat. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not a guy looking for average. I want Super Bowls. I want Super Bowls. With this type of roster, you should have beaten the Patriots. You didn't. Your team didn't come prepared enough. Shut out in the first half. It was bad. Congrats to the Patriots, though. You know they played the better game and they ultimately deserved to win. And that's pretty much a wrap for y'all guys. I will be covering some NFL things, some offseason things now. Give me topics you want me to talk about. I will be covering the Super Bowl, giving my predictions, all that good stuff. But it has been your boy Jamal McKinney and. I'm Ghost, and as always, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, all that stuff. And without further ado, like I said, I'm out you.